A warm welcome to Anuradha Vedic Astrology. Today we are going to understand the transit principle for pinpoint prediction. Generally we listen to transits but we are not able to ascertain how a person came to such a conclusion. Also transits can be nakshatra based. And they will give very specific results in specific padas of nakshatras. So, today we are going to see into the nakshatra transit of Rahu in the nakshatra of Uttara Bhadra and correlate it with the nakshatra lord, the Vimshotri nakshatra lord Saturn. Because at the end of the day, it is Saturn which is going to give us the results along with Rahu. As the Navamsh is very important because Navamsh is nothing but the division of the nakshatra in various padas. So, we have to take into account the Navamsh as is stated in the Uttar Kalamrit. So, taking a principle of Uttar Kalamrit, I am going to show you how we will be understanding the transit of any planet through any nakshatra with the help of the current transit of Rahu in Uttar Bhadrapada. But before that, a big thanks to all of you for liking, sharing and subscribing to our YouTube and Spotify channels and writing in your comments and suggestions there. If you haven't subscribed to us, please do and do remember to press the bell icon so that we can give you an update ASAP. Now, when we are talking about Rahu now, Rahu is transiting through the Uttar Bhadrapada nakshatra which is in the Vimshotri Dasha scheme of things, the nakshatra of Saturn. Where does Saturn, how does Saturn get involved here? Saturn gets involved as the nakshatra lord. We all know that Rahu is the planet that wants to teach us a lot of things. So, there is a lot of learning with respect to Uttar Bhadrapada that is important for us. But which house is it transiting for us is very important also. For a person who has uh, the lagna of this, these are the two charts I have taken up uh, both in the North Indian and the South Indian style. So, we will do it here. In the North Indian style, the lagna is uh, the sign of Gemini. So, we have Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius and then we have um, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. So, Rahu currently is passing through the 10th house for the Gemini Lagna people and we can see the same similar setup here where Rahu is transiting through the 10th house for the Gemini Lagna people people that is one point. But Rahu is transiting through the nakshatra of Saturn and for that we need to check out where Saturn is placed in a person's chart. Say if Saturn is placed in the sign of Leo in a person's chart. Okay? So, what is the sign of Leo? The sign of Leo is say the, the lagna, the D9 lagna can be anything but you take up where Saturn is sitting in the uh, D9 chart. I have taken up the sign of Leo. Okay? So, I pick this Saturn up and I plot in the D1 the sign of Leo. The sign of Leo here is falling in the third house and I superimpose my Saturn in the third house. For here, I superimpose this Saturn here in the third house. What does it say? The third house is the house of change and Rahu also represents certain changes when it wherever it moves it will show changes related to that house and it will also show activity related to that house. But Saturn is telling me that there is a change, there is a change in the offing in respect to the upcoming uh, uh, job. Why? Because of profession. Why? Because Rahu is associated with the 10th house and Saturn is associated with the 3rd house of that person concerned. So, when I ask the person, 
has because Rahu and Saturn will have started giving slight results of their activities right on the onset of the transit. And this activity is likely to continue for 230 days. You can always ask me why 230 days. When you roughly calculate the transit of Rahu through a sign, through a nakshatra, then you will know that nakshatra having 4 padas of 3 degree 20 minutes each, that makes it 13 degrees 20 minutes and Rahu takes approximately 13, 18 days to transit through a nakshatra. So, it is approximately 230 days that we find Rahu will be transiting through a nakshatra. And so, Rahu will be transiting through Uttar Bhadrapada for 230 days. That is, if I count from July, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, that makes it around 210 days and most of February. So, nearly we have a period of till January mid of February, we have a period when Rahu would be transiting through this Uttar Bhadrapada nakshatra. And that is exactly the time when a person will be feeling a lot of changes. It can be in the position, it can be a change of job, it can be a change of title in the same organization. You could be given a higher title or you could be moved within the same organization to a different group to a different uh, level, all these things are likely to happen and this is to happen start, the onset would be there and a promotion and a progression can be seen as Rahu progresses in more towards the end of January, more towards the beginning, uh, sorry, more towards the end of December, January, why? Because Saturn gives its results late. Saturn is the planet which does not hurry in anything. So, November to January can be a very changing terminus period, but the changes would have started right now. We can take up another chart. Now, let us take this second chart. In this second chart, the Lagna is the sign of Virgo and the Rahu at this current moment is transiting through the seventh house of a person and that is the sign of Pisces. Okay. In the D9, we find that for the person concerned, uh, the Lagna here is Aquarius and Rahu and Saturn is placed in the sign of Makar or Capricorn. Sign is Capricorn, Lagna is in the D9, Aquarius and in the D1, the sign is Virgo in the South Indian chart also. So, now when we are to see, apply the principle that I said, we will take the transit in the 7th house, in the D1. Take the Saturn of the D, take the Saturn of the D9 and place it in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because the 5th house D1 being uh, the 6th, the sign 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, it is in the Saturn is placed in the sign of, we are superimposing it and placing it in Capricorn. Here also I will take it and place it in Capricorn. From here I will transfer it here. This is what I need to see. What do I need? What do I see? The seventh house is a house where you interact with the public, where you go out and you know how to deal with the people. The fifth house is a house where you learn whatever that you have learnt. The fourth house is a house of learnings. You learn a lot of things at a young age. The fifth house is the intelligence or the application of your education. The seventh house here because it is Rahu, it will give you uh, a, a strong leaning to move and to make your presence felt in a public domain. Because as I said, Uttara Bhadra is a nakshatra which is all about learning, it is all about teaching, it is all about uh, gracefully learning new arts and earning money also. Uttara Bhadrapada gives person lot of money and fifth house is also related to money. But because it is Saturn involved, it is not going to give you anything soon and as I said towards the end of 230 days, more so from 180 to um, I should say 150 to 230, that the entire period of 230. Uh, 
60-70 days that is the period when this nakshatra will bear results of Rahu transit. And what would it say for this person? When I ask this person, have you had opportunities for higher learnings, for traveling because the seventh house is also about traveling. So have you had opportunities about traveling for higher learnings and for uh, making new associations? Again, Rahu moving into the house of new association. And as Saturn is placed in the fifth house, its own house, do you also have an ability or do you also have an opportunity to express yourself to uh, and whatever that you know, your knowledge in a public forum? And that is exactly bang on what the person said, that the person had an opportunity, was also going to have opportunities, but the person could showcase her talent to others through uh, making association and getting together with other people, not from the same community, from other communities. So we need to understand that the basic principle when we talk about any planetary transit, check out in which house that planet is transiting, place it there. Look into the nakshatra that it is transiting through and look into the D9 as to where the nakshatra lord is placed. Get it into the D1 chart, place it exactly in the same position. Use this combination and make as many predictions as you want to. It will give you great results. Till we meet with you again, stay safe and do write to us how you found this video. Please hit the bell icon for fresh updates. Don't forget to like, share and comment on the videos and please subscribe to our channel.